How to get paid making games. Hello everyone, my name is Norman Conformist and welcome back guys to another video on this channel. Well, I've attended to a free masterclass during two days. The first day was how to get paid before you finish your game. And then the second day was how to get paid after you launch your game. And because I love you guys very, very much and I want to thank you for the fact that we are 60 on this channel already. I've recorded the most important lessons that I learned from Thomas Brush, a guy that I really admire and appreciate and he's very inspirational in what he's doing. And without any more introduction, let's jump into the video. Their resources are great and it's, again, easy to learn. Unreal, I would say the learning curve is a little bit more difficult. In case you are new in this field, this is a short introduction for you to get familiarized with the platforms out there. The resources and documentation for Unreal are notoriously not as extensive for Unity. So just because something looks beautiful doesn't mean that you can make a ton of money from it. Godot is open source, easy to learn, intuitive, very similar to Unity, very similar to Unity. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Unity. It was the only engine that I've used. I really want to try the other engines as well in the future. So stay with me during this journey because I promise it's gonna be very interesting. Um, it's growing insanely fast. We'll talk about that in a second. And uh, the console tools though, to port to console, not really there. Publishers, if you're gonna get paid by a publisher to make your game, they do prefer Unity. And that's just because of Unity, it's so easy to port. When a publisher gives you money, they're thinking, how do we exploit this game? It's a nasty word, but it, it's, it's totally fine. We're all exploiting our games at the end of the day. Okay, so which engine here has the, sh the biggest market share, okay? And this is helpful because it's gonna help you know, okay, which one has longevity? Because it's gonna maybe take you a year, two years, three years to make your game. So you wanna sort of pin your game to, <laughs> the engine that's gonna last the longest. The thing is with Godot, it's just the beginning. Let's say, you know, we all have launchers, right? We got Android and we got iOS. Well, when it comes to comparing it with other engines, this is basically the main idea. It's not because it's bad, it's not because of everything. It's just in its beta version, let's say. Look at this graph, Godot. Godot is exponentially growing. It is skyrocketing. This is very useful in long term. Like for example, if you plan starting it now and launch your game in three years, let's say, well, you have to make sure you pay attention to this. Unity's blown past these numbers, okay? Unity's not even on this chart because it's massively overperforming all these other ones. Also, notice Unreal, tiny number of games because it's a high fidelity engine. You're gonna get high fidelity graphics and a lot of these games are like web-based games. It's not cool to say you're gonna stick with Unity. And guys, make sure you take screenshots of this because it's very useful. I mean, it's on Thomas Brush Unlisted video, so you can't find this online. You can find it only here. So this is a way of me saying thank you to you guys for your sources for every game developer and not only. I just get it. It just clicks. It's kind of like the English language. It's not the best language in the world, but it just clicks with me because I was born into it. It's versatile for 2D and 3D games, can port to pretty much anything. This is why I mostly love Unity. It feels like it's a very international platform in which you can do whatever you want. Possibilities are out there. And now we are gonna watch free resources to help you launch your game. Now, really quickly for sound, you can use Audacity, which is free. For 2D art, you can use GIMP, which is open source and free. Blender is open source and free for 3D art. And the cool thing is, is that Blender files and Photoshop files, they just work inside of Unity. I wasn't sure about this, so I also learned something new. Well, let's start with publishers. What is a publisher? Well, a publisher gives you money and they take a cut. Okay? So they give you, let's say a hundred grand to make your game. You give them a demo and then they say, we like it, we believe in it, we believe in you, here's a hundred grand, but we want 40%, we want 30%, or we want half of the revenue. There's a 100% recoup. Sometimes it's 80-20. And what I mean by that is they'll give you 20% of the revenue until they hit 100% of the recoup. And then the split happens. Ultimately, at the end of the day, they're gonna want their money back. It's not a loan because you're not legally obligated to, for your game to make that money back. Okay, you're le legally obligated to finish the game, but you're not legally obligated, that would be ridiculous, to, to get the money recouped. You don't pay them back. You're not sending them money. They just take the game and put it on Steam and the money funnels into their account and then they send you a check. 
I've heard about publishers before from other YouTubers as well, but I never actually knew what is it about. So let's dive deeper into it. A good publisher has a network. They have a built-in audience and they just know how to sell certain kinds of games. Like Devolver knows how to sell certain kinds of games. They're going to help with QA. That's quality assurance. They're just going to test the crap out of your game. They're going to help localize the game. That's create like maybe six to 12 languages um, for your game. And then they're also going to help with porting. Uh, porting is a big deal, okay, because it can bring in about 30% of your revenue. So think about it this way. If a publisher takes, let's say, 30% of your revenue, but they're going to handle the port, well, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation are going to bring in an additional 30%. Is that worth it to you? So the question is how, how do you get a publisher, right? All you got to do is reach out to publishers who have published relevant games in your genre. That's about it. That's all I've done. So this is how it works. It's not complicated. And in fact, with ChatGPT, it's particularly easy. Let's do it right now. All right, let's ask ChatGPT, what are some publishers who have released first-person shooters? Once you get a list here, um, let's say Devolver, let's say, how do, we, how do we get an email address for Devolver? Keep this in mind if you want a good publisher. Google it. That's about it. <laughs> let's see here. Work with us. Oh, pitch your game. Oh, what? It's right there. Also, you can say, well, who are the lead people at Devolver? We can also type on Google. We can say, who owns Devolver Digital? What's my point? Look at all these folks. We can find them on Google and find their email addresses and email them individually. If you can get 100 email addresses, send your pitch to 100 people. Now, what's a pitch? This is a pitch. But this is the Brave Boy pitch, OK? You see, I've got a full let's play of the entire thing. And in the video, I'm talking about what's happening while I play it. So it's just a let's play. It's a private let's play of the entire demo. I really advise you guys to build up a page right before starting your game because it's gonna help you a lot. You will have a lot of thoughts. Maybe other people might suggest you stuff like do that instead of this and so on. But if you go way far from why you started like what was your hook and we will dive deeper into this in the next few minutes well make sure that you stick to your plan everything and also some credibility here it's all one web page so all you do is just send this web page to publishers publishers i've talked to yesterday they gave me information about these deals submit your game to these platforms get these links you could just become a partner with xbox I didn't even know it's so easy to become a partner with such a huge company only if they're gonna like your game of course but it's kind of easy honestly i thought it's gonna get way more harder to approach these companies but apparently not you just have to be there stand out for your project believe in it make sure it's good good for you and if it's good for them well you'll be given a rep and that rep will then, hopefully you'll be given a rep if they like your game, and they'll sort of ask you, when do you plan on releasing the game? How much do you want to charge for it? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, what's the game about? They'll ask for your GDD. What's a GDD? It's a game design document, but we will go and find out more about it later on. I highly suggest making a very beautiful GDD if you're gonna work with any of these platforms. PlayStation in particular, just FYI guys, they don't really pay anymore, so I should have changed that. They pay with marketing. Is that a good thing? Well, they're going to put their, your game on their front page. That's kind of cool. But how much revenue is that? <laughs> Just remember, it's going to take revenue from Steam. It's going to take revenue from PlayStation. It's going to take revenue. So in a way, you're sort of cannibalizing your game. So you just need to keep that in mind. So make sure you know where you want your game to be. Because if your only focus is going to be on Steam, well, just work with Steam, right? Don't get so excited that you want to share your game everywhere and when it comes to money well the platforms are gonna extract all the money you're gonna be kind of broke because that's not how you want to work this masterclass as he said and as i said it's about monetizing basically your game so make sure you don't share yourself too much each and there because then they're gonna extract all the money you're gonna be broke so that's not what we want and yes this money comes in before you finish your game okay so that is another option. So money's tighter on the platform side. On the plat, not publishing side, publishers are still paying handsomely. Platforms, not necessarily. Apple has shifted, Apple Arcade, to focus on mobile-friendly games. I'm talking super mobile-friendly, like 
Yeah, so if you want your game to be only for children, go for Apple Arcade. If not, don't waste your time. Platform deals are really stuff you can get with a publisher. A lot of publishers, they're signing these platform deals all day long. They have bigger perks due to portfolio interest, AKA Xbox is like, ooh, we like that new game that you just signed, but we want these four as well. And so they'll sign, they'll sign a package deal that's like worth a million bucks and you'll get a cut. You can see here, as long as you have a polished pitch and demo, you can A, replicate another similar campaign. You can reach out to Kickstarter. Um, you can use other campaigns to reach out to their list. You can use your social media, even if it's tiny. My social media was tiny when I did my first campaign. Which is great. And this one is so important, down here, E. If the thought in your head popped up and said, I don't have an audience, you're thinking completely wrong about making games. Because when I was launching my Kickstarter campaign for Pinstripe, I had a demo and I had friends, that was it. And so what I did was I reached out on Facebook, annoyingly, like a salesman, almost like knocking door to door. I reached out to every contact I had locally and I sent them a preview link for my campaign. So it's very, very important to have a published pitch and demo. You have to sell yourself and your game and your brand, if it's the case, of course. Because if you're not good at marketing, well, hire someone, contact a friend, make sure you're getting there because marketing, in my opinion, it's 80% of your game. You can have the most amazing game out there. If you don't know how to sell it, it's not gonna work. I said, what do you think about this campaign? I would love your advice. That's all I said. Why did I say that? People love to be asked for their opinion. Did you know that one of the best ways to flatter someone is to let them flatter you? Okay, Thomas, okay. Number one, it makes the content better, but number two, it makes you feel involved. Guess who's here? Do you guys see why, number one, confidence is so important? It is, confidence is important in life, in everything that you're doing, because let's say I want to sell this plan. If I believe that this is what you need, you're gonna buy it. But if I'm gonna be like, um, I was wondering, you know, do you want to buy this pen? It's not gonna work. You have to buy this pen. This is the best pen out. Okay, let's stop. And number two, resourcefulness. I don't wanna hear excuses about your audience size. I mean, Thomas, is crowdfunding still a thing? Like, you're talking about something that feels old. There's this book by Jeff Walker called Launch. It's incredible. I don't know, I also have to read it. Thank you, Thomas, something new. Launching a Kickstarter campaign, launching a game, pff, launching a online course, launching to publishers, they're all the same thing. It's a launch. What makes Kickstarter special? Why not just build your own campaign? What do they have? Contacts. Kickstarter relies heavily on an email list. Email seems old, but man, is it, is it powerful. The way I got into his masterclass was by email. So yeah, it works. All Kickstarter is is it's a platform, it's a website, with a payment processor. They handle the campaign timing for you, and then they email out your project to a newsletter. They also have SEO, so traffic drives to, to Kickstarter as well, and they also have a social media presence, but ultimately at the end of the day, that's just an audience, okay? So what's my point? If you build your own audience, you don't need Kickstarter, and you don't have to rely on Kickstarter being relevant. Thank you guys very much for being here, supporting me. You don't even have an idea how much it matters to me because I've always been into YouTube, like always. And having my own people out here is just great. What are the pros and cons of cashing in? If you cash in now, meaning you decide to get money from a publisher, a platform, a Kickstarter, you're gonna feel pressure. But a lot of you could use it. You're gonna stop quitting your game. You don't have the legal opportunity. There's no freedom or wiggle room anymore. You've got to finish it. Platforms create a particularly intense pressure. I would say platforms are way more intense than publishers. Publishers have flexibility with schedule. Platforms do not. So the companies that you were relying on that are going to save you are actually going to kill you if you're not ready for them. Platforms are like, we need this in March and we're, we have a whole go to market. That's what GTM is. We have a whole go to market plan and you have to be perfectly fitting inside of your deadlines to launch when they need you to because it's all, everything's interconnected with these platform deals. If you can cope with stress, my advice is don't do it, at least not at the very beginning. 
once you get experience with it and you feel like you can start and you have enough time to put in the effort for this then you might think about it but if not if you don't have the time and if someone's gonna pressure you and you don't have the money well prison is not that far so make sure you know yourself before doing this in the chat below any advice to train the eye in terms of getting an art eye to create visual impact for style or games i love looking at games and looking at the color theory of those games i also love looking and playing games so this is why on this channel you're gonna see me playing games reacting to other stuff it's not gonna be only about my own things no because it's a process you have to learn from the others and then you have to implement it's not gonna i'm gonna learn just by myself it's not possible at least in this field a great example is Hollow Knight and also that the player has a strong sense of focus. So I would say contrast, color theory, and focus. And it's going to be so helpful for you because then you can start analyzing games. In this case, notice how they're following rules here. What's the rule? Anything related to the player is white. Notice how he's got a white skull. Everything else is grayed out a little bit. But look at this. The UI is white as well. Rules create beauty you have to connect stuff my current struggle is world design any tips on placing objects guiding the player providing curiosity intrigue in areas with multiple paths and points of interest Ooh, we're working on this right now man um with twisted tower what we figured was it's great to get a top-down view of the map honestly just grab paper and try to draw your game from this perspective because it's gonna be very interesting and create especially if it's a linear experience I mean linear, by linear I mean it's guiding the player okay get a top down of the map and draw da dotted lines around your puzzle boxes all that means is moments for the player areas where they it's not even that they have to solve a puzzle it's just a locked in location where their folk their interest is focused that allows you to compartmentalize uh, mini problems for the player and create little moments. It's almost like a script or a screenplay. It has things called beats. So this is why beats are called like that in music as well. Heart beat. This makes sense. Okay. A beat is when you go from one emotion to the next and they're segmented or grouped by like three, three pages, then you have a beat. Then you have two pages, then a beat. The same is true with game design. Give your player a moment to experience something specific and then they solve it and then they move on to the next thing oh one, one final thing dude um give the player the problem first before the solution this is very important very very important let's see why show them the locked door before they get the key okay oftentimes game designers have it inverted they give the solution and the player has the solution and then they don't even know that it solved a problem I've encountered this way of playing games. I don't remember exactly which ones, but it's true. Video games are fun because they're, you're solving problems. That's really what makes video games fun. What's the fastest way to get wish lists? Steam Next Fest. Okay, now, the reason I bring that up, when do you want to launch your demo with Steam Next Fest? What's the general rule? Before Thomas, I've never heard about it. It was my first time by watching his videos, and it's very, very important. The general rule is like, maybe max six months before the game comes out it's logical yeah do not launch on steam next fest a demo two years away from the demo because the leads get cold the list gets cold if you want to sell something it needs to be hot it needs to be fired it have to come out now you have to buy it now it doesn't work like prepare i'm gonna launch my game in two years but you have to make sure you're there you don't even know what's gonna be like tomorrow it's not necessarily true, this time frame theory with certain genres. So this is just my opinion, and it's an opinion that my publisher shares. A horror game you might want to launch in October, you still might want to hit that horror uh, spooky season time. If your game is seasonal, you might want to launch your demo during that season. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how it is for you, but for me, when the Halloween is near, I really want to play games about Halloween, or at least they have something with that season, so it's very important. If you have a community on Discord, social media, 
How do you get them hyped? Uh, provide value. To get your community hyped, give them stuff. This is why I'm here providing this free course, free private course actually for you guys as well. Give them a demo. Give them devlogs. Send them emails with, with uh, cool tips and tricks and how you did stuff and how you made stuff. Do not talk about, I need a wish list. I started to think about creating my newsletter as well on email. Yeah, I will see when. So stay tuned. It's not about the three-dimensional camera. You know, it's not about 2D, 3D. It's do you have a hook? And do you follow through with that hook with good game design mechanics and a great fun loop? It's the whole package. Stop thinking about, well, this genre sells and that genre sells. The genre is not going to get you to stand out. Yeah, if you're going to think about the money, it's not going to work at all. Do whatever makes you feel happy because then you'll find your people. You will find your tribe just like I have you guys. So don't worry about that. People are going to come to you, but you have to believe in yourself. That matters. Guys, what are the chances of, you know, your first game getting published? They're slim. That's why I recommend getting your first game out there and just releasing it on itch.io and being done with it. Imagine I did my first game for university, so <laughs> it's sort of a demo, let's say. Your second game has a higher probability of getting a publisher. My second game was the one that I made with you in one day, and I'm thinking about building up on it. This is why I didn't publish it anywhere, but we are going to do it. What questions should I be asking myself when I'm speaking with publishers? So if they, if they take 20% of your revenue, at bare minimum, in its lifetime, they should have provided that revenue through their marketing arm, through their network, signing platform deals. You basically offer value by giving them that percentage of well, they have to work accordingly and give it to you as well. How do I know my demo is polished and ready? Send it to publishers and see if they bite. If they bite, it's probably ready, right? If they don't bite, it's not ready. I'm answering your question as if you're asking, when do I drop my demo on Steam? Now to know whether it's time to send it to a publisher, is it glitch free? Does it work with gamepad and mouse? Is the frame rate at 60 FPS on any P on most PCs? Take notes guys. Is there music or stand in music? Is there some bit of voice acting that's hired and not you? And now is the second day. So this was before launching your game. Well, this is after you launch your game. Let's see. Let's talk about the process. There's four steps to ensuring you make six figures with a launched game. If you wanna make actual money, you've gotta capture attention, okay? So before you even think about launching your game, and frankly, before you even begin your game, you gotta come up. You gotta come up with a good hook. What visually, mechanically, and narratively makes your game stand out? Step two, well, the question is, how do I know that's actually a hook? I'm serious, I love this one. Tell a friend, anybody, just to tell your grandmother, I don't care. Tell them the, the hook idea. It should be in a sentence, one single sentence. It's like a synopsis of a movie. That's what you have to do with your game. Or actually think about it this way. What if your game is actually a movie? How would you describe the movie? Tell them about that hook. And if they immediately come back with ideas, it's a winner. The same is true with social media. If you post your hook idea, hey guys, poll, here's my hook. What do you think? If it's a bunch of like, you could do this and you could do that and you could do this and you could do that means it's a strong hook. Step two, now that we have our hook, now that we have a really good idea, and now that we're working on our game as we're preparing for launch. So step one, create your freaking Steam page. No matter how ugly it is, get it live so you can start getting wish lists. I also have to do that. I don't have a Steam, I mean, I do have a Steam page, but it's for me as a player, so yeah. So you need to be in the next fest uh, that's closest to your launch date with a demo. Please, 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 for the love of God, you're going to get a ton of wish lists, all right? This is what he said before about hot sales. So it's not a cold wish list. It's going to be very hot because it's in two weeks, the hype is there. If you want the press to write about your game, find games that are very similar to yours. Find their articles that are written. You can do this on Metacritic, by the way. Just type in Hollow Knight and find all the articles written about Hollow Knight. Contact the individual who wrote that article. Step five, reach out, and this is before launch, okay? Reach, and it's like two weeks before launch. This isn't your demo. Step five, right before you launch a game, two weeks before, reach out to major outlets. Hey, here's my trailer, right? Here's an embargo. What's an embargo? It tells them when they can write an article. So you typically wanna do an embargo like the day of launch. Step three, the Steam Cannonball 
is eight steps that I think are really gonna help you when you click launch on Steam. Remind them, say, hey, two weeks ago, I sent you this key, and just FYI, the game's out now, so if you wanna post an article, I would, I would be so grateful. So I highly recommend you get email subscribers. Oftentimes the way to do this is just for the, for the year of development, just make sure that you have a link in your bio that says get the demo when it's out. Um, and I'll email you, and so they'll, they'll sign up to get the demo. What I really love about this community, like game developers in general, is that their viewers, you guys, are actually checking the description. I'm pretty sure you do. If I mention that I have free resources in my description or something related to, I don't know, something useful, I'm pretty sure you're gonna click it. For the other YouTubers or vloggers, it's not really like that. If they want to promote this, it's not that easy, but for us, as game devs, I feel like it's very easy to promote something. What content to make on YouTube besides devlogs? You can do Q and A's like this. I would love to do Q and A's, but honestly, I don't have the experience yet. So yeah. Um, and then cut them and, and upload them. Interview other game developers. I would love to do this. I actually sent him a message on Instagram, but I'm thinking about sending him an email. He might answer. I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure. Make sure to subscribe because I really want to have Thomas in an interview at some point in this YouTube career. You can break open your project and show people just screen record. Will the average person's first commercial game generate enough income to work to get a full-time income? Probably not. But if you're only in this for one game, you shouldn't get in it to begin with. It's like, it's like saying, um, if, I, uh, if I go to school or college for a year, will I be able to get a job? No. And that's just, that's just the nature of any industry, okay? So you gotta stick with it. Um, I always say your first game is gonna flop. Put it on HIO, close your eyes, plug your nose, whatever it takes, hold your breath. Click launch and don't read the comments and just move forward. Um, get it over with. <laughs> I didn't know about HIO, I've discovered it in a podcast. Maybe I'm gonna make a video about that podcast as well because it's very, very useful. The way you get streamers to stream your game, the way I contacted Matt Pat is and I reached out to his private email and I said, hey, I wanna put you in my next game. And I showed him a screenshot of his, like a character of his, like an avatar in the game. Yeah, I also thought about this. It was in my plans in the near future, but I hope it's gonna happen at some point. And he was like, oh, that's cool. And I said, you can play the game. Here's a Steam key. And he played it because he was in the game. Why do streamers care? Is it they want views. How do they get views? Well, here's the thumbnail. This is him holding the game, okay? And the title is, I'm in this game. What percent from the publisher would you feel most comfortable to go for? I have seen 30%. Would you be comfortable with higher than, always. I, I've signed deals at 50%. Guys, okay. Um, how much would you be willing to spend on a car? That's a difficult question to answer, isn't it? Because you don't know what the car is, right? Would you be willing to spend $10,000 on a car? Maybe. What if I told you it's a Porsche? Brand spanking new Porsche. How many of you would scramble to find $10,000? You'd do it. So the question is really about value, right? A publisher, if they bring a lot to the table and they provide you value, then a 60% deal is amazing, right? How many of you would sign a 60% deal if Microsoft said that they would put your game on the front page of their website, of, of the Xbox store for three months? Oh my God, next to Minecraft, I mean. What makes the best Kickstarter video? Um, I'm gonna give you guys a little secret here. Let's let's break down every great story, okay, into a, a little formula. I did not make this up. This is this is classic storytelling. Let's think about Luke Skywalker. Search for Russell Branson if you want to get great tips and tricks for storytelling and selling stuff in general. Break down the story of Luke Skywalker in Episode Four: A New Hope of Star Wars. We have to search for that and actually do it ourselves. Maybe another video, another idea. And this is going to help you in your Kickstarter video or in your devlogs, in your game story ideas. A farm boy discovers he's a Jedi, joins a rebellion, and defeats an evil empire led by his father. 
This story arc is classic. And that's what you need to do with your game. The lowest of the low finds out he's king of all, or will bring balance to the force, or will defeat the greatest uh, evilest Sith Lord in the universe. So small to big, contrast. Why does this matter? Because everybody, every human being feels tiny and they wanna be big. Emotions are in everything. You can manipulate, you can empathize with someone just by hearing their story, sharing yours, but now today it's about sharing your story. So you have to make sure emotions stand out for your story. If you don't have any emotion involved, it's not gonna work. We are not robots, we are not AI, right? You said a farm boy discovers he's a Jedi. Let's, let's, let's really focus on the beginning because the beginning is so important. A farm boy who hates his life, feels trapped, has no money, has no family, who's made fun of, who's dorky, dreams of one day being a fighter pilot because something deep down in him tells him he's a fire, fighter pilot, but he can't. What did I just do there? I said he's small, but then I described how he felt. So like with a Kickstarter video, watch this. Hey guys, my name is Thomas Brush and I need $100,000 to finish my game, Twisted Tower. That's not gonna work. That's pitch one. Now let's use the Luke Skywalker approach. Hey guys, my name is Thomas Brush and I've been making games for six years. Last year, I wanted to quit. I was incredibly burnt out. In fact, I lost a lot of money. I lost $100,000 making prototypes for my games and nothing stuck. But last week I woke up and something inside of me told me that I needed to make this game and it's called Twisted Tower. See how it transformed everything. Like now I also feel like I'm interested and I want to find out more about it. Suddenly I feel a fire inside of me. Suddenly I feel encouraged. And my dream of making a first person shooter similar to Half-Life or Bioshock is manifest inside me. Do you want to join me on that dream? You can't say no anymore. Do you notice how I'm saying I'm small, I'm broken, but there's a fire in my belly about some kind of fate, some kind of destiny. And here's the thing, you don't wanna lie about this, but it's probably not a lie because it's true for everybody. Now, this is a sort of a conclusion. The indie game dream is, it's not easy. Uh, it doesn't happen for most people. Um. So I don't want you to worship it and make it your like idol and your identity. That's the sad truth. You have to prepare mentally. If it's gonna be a failure that your life will go on. But we don't want that because we are putting in effort, passion, dedication, consistency, everything. It requires time, a lot of time. But if you feel like there's that fire in you, the one that he mentioned, it's gonna work out in the end. I promise you. It's not a cult. A lot of people make cults out of like game engines. I love you a lot. I want to see, I want I want you guys to be successful. Me too. I really want you guys to be successful. I want also myself to be successful at some point because uh, we are here in this together to learn. And I'm proud of all of you guys for showing up and sticking through this webinar. Hope you learned a lot. Thank you, Thomas, for sharing all these free resources. I really hope you guys learned something from today's video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more free resources because I'm giving everything for free. It's not like I'm gonna ask. I don't have a course. I don't have experience at all by now. So don't expect me to sell you anything at the moment. Um, maybe in the future, who knows? But yeah, I'm the Unconformist. Thank you very much for staying here and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.